Okay, the quickest way to create your openings is to use the extrude option. So go ahead, press EXT for extrude and select, you can select pretty much all the objects that are on a plane. So I can select those five, press enter, and I'm gonna extrude them kind of into the building. Not a whole lot, just a little bit like so. Then we could do so with another side. So EXT for extrude. And I'm gonna click on these five over here. Press enter, extrude those out. Rotate to my other side and extrude these ones out. I think there's one more there. Okay. We also got four over here. One. We could probably get all these in the same shot. Let's try. So that one, that one. And like so. Okay. Now you'll notice right there it looks like it did something. It's possible it cut them. So let's go back to a shaded view. Okay. And it doesn't look like it cut it. Just possibly not extruded enough. So I'm going to change back to 2D wireframe and undo that. And extrude it one more time. So that kind of happens sometimes. You mean to extrude it enough and you don't. Okay, so this time I'm just going to specify a number. I'll just say three and enter. So I know I extruded enough. Okay. Now let's go ahead and subtract this from the overall solid. We've kind of already done this before when we were cutting out the interior portion, but it's the same command, subtract, enter. You want to select the overall house first, press enter, and then you select the inner portion, press enter. And if you do so correctly, you know, you will crop out the correct portion. So subtract, select the exterior, enter, select the interior, enter, and then you've cut it out. Okay, let's see if we can do multiple objects as well. So subtract, select that, enter. I'm going to select multiple objects, press enter, and it does work with multiple objects as well. So let's see if we could get this all with one single go. Enter, select that, enter, then I'm going to click on each individual portion. I think I got them all. Let's find out. Enter. And it's looking good. Okay, let's head over to a shaded view to see how that turned out. Oh yeah, it turned out beautiful. Awesome. We're going to extrude the interior walls now. The only issue is that when we use the extrude command, EXT, press enter, you'll notice that we cannot actually select our entire portion because everything's kind of broken up into lines because that's how we originally created it. So not a big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to hide the exterior wall layer. So let me introduce you here to the layer properties and I want you to click on this button. It's going to open up a a list of where we could put individual layers and we're going to create three layers right now. I want you to right click, go to new layer and call this exterior walls. So that's going to be our exterior walls layer. Right click again in this open space, new layer. We're going to call this interior walls. And then lastly, one last right click, new layer. We're going to call this one roof. So we've created three layers. We're going to associate a color with each layer. For the out outmost layer, let's go ahead and give that like a reddish finish. For the interior walls, let's go ahead and give that a more bluish finish. And for our roof, let's go ahead and give that a darker color. So maybe like a dark brown or something like that. So associate each with a level. Then I'm going to go ahead and press the X here, select the exterior wall portion, and we're going to associate that to a level by clicking on this arrow portion here and putting it over to the exterior walls. So I'm going to click it there. It's now been associated with that layer. So if I go to that layer, and if you see this little light bulb here, and I click it off, you'll notice that it makes the layer disappear so that all we have visible to us are our interior lines. So I'm going to go from the top. So I'm looking at it kind of from the top of the drawing and I'm going to use the line tool 
just to close off anywhere where we accidentally have an opening due to the exterior walls. Okay, so I just press escape and enter again to reactivate it each time that I need to move over. I'm just closing everything off because you cannot extrude a solid or a series of lines that is not a closed object. You can to a degree, but it won't be a solid closed object. Okay, just like that. So we're going to attempt to group these all together with the join command. So go ahead and type in join, enter, select everything together, enter, and hopefully 41 objects converted to three 3D polylines. Looks like it worked. So all three of these should be extrudable. We're going to find out right now. We're going to use the extrude command, enter. Then we're going to go ahead and select all three objects, enter, and you'll notice it extrudes right away. That's great. Let's extrude it a total of 10 feet. So 10, enter, and now everything's in place. The only issue is this area over here. It's looking as though it's a solid, but that's actually supposed to be a room. So we're going to subtract one solid from the other. Let's use the subtract command, enter, and there should be a profile on the bottom. So subtract, enter, click there, enter, and then look for the individual profile on the bottom. There it is. I'm going to click on that, press enter. And if you did so correctly, it should hollow out that portion. So now all we are left with are the interior walls. Let's go ahead and designate those. So I'm going to select all three over here next to our layer properties. I'm going to now allocate that over to the interior walls section by clicking on that and now they've been adjusted accordingly. So we got our interior walls. I can go ahead, turn on our exterior walls, and you can see that everything's starting to fit together. Lastly, let's go ahead and build our roof. Right now I'm thinking a gable and valley with a one foot overhang. And the best way to approach this is because we already have this made over here, let's just use the one we already have made so we don't have to build it directly on top of our structure. Use the copy command, enter, select your floor, and we're going to move it out here to the side. Then we're going to use the offset command, enter, to specify a one offset, one foot offset, enter. And then I'm going to select this object and go out one more foot, click like so, and then we can start building. Now it's going to be a little tricky to work with this in a singular view. So we're going to split this into two views. To do that, I want you to click on the little negative sign over here. These are your viewport controls. Go to viewport configuration list. And we're going to switch to two horizontal views, except I think I'm thinking two vertical views. And we've essentially created two views. One we're going to leave as an isometric, and one we're going to use on that side profile. So to switch this one over to isometric, let's uh, go ahead click where it says top and let's try the southwest isometric that's perfect for me so I'm gonna leave that one there and for this one over here let's go ahead and try instead of the top view let's go ahead try the left of that and the left isn't good let me try the the front let me see what that gives me okay I could work with the front there so for your custom view here make sure you're on the front so you're looking at it like that so to begin let's use the line tool line make sure you're on this view here your isometric press enter and i want you to find the midpoint of this object here and i would like you to click on it and kind of go vertically upward and we're going to go up because this is a 36 36 foot wall let's go up 13 units press enter and you're going to notice right away that it goes up in the correct direction Let's also see if we can just snap this into place. We might actually be able to line from there to there. 